Hi everyone, today Phone Arena is going to be taking a look at Verizon's current 4G LTE smartphone lineup. We have the Samsung Droid Charge, the LG Revolution, HTC Thunderbolt, and most recently the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic. Starting over here with the uh, Samsung Droid Charge, it's the only device out of the group to use a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display. Because of this, the uh, colors are going to be uh, really highly uh, saturated. Also has a pretty good contrast with uh, good black levels. Also has uh, four uh, manual buttons down here on the bottom, while the other three devices are uh, touch sensitive buttons at the bottom. Uh, design of the phone isn't that bad, but uh, one of the things we don't like about it is the uh, cheap a feeling plastic construction as it's uh, really slippery on the back and every time you go to hold the phone it almost feels like it's about to uh, slip out of your uh, hand but it is the uh, lightest uh, weight out of the group at only uh, 5.04 ounces up next the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic uh, recently came out last week uh, it actually has the uh, best feel out of the group it's a uh, relatively thin at only a zero point four inches down here at the bottom though it does get a little bit thicker up here at the top with the uh, camera hump has the uh, soft touch coating on the back which gives it a pretty nice uh, feel on the hand I have a uh, 4.3 inch uh, a QHD display here on the front the uh, touch sensitive buttons around the bottom uh, one nice thing that we like is this uh, gray chrome uh, that encompasses the uh, glass on the front, the uh, Gorilla Glass. Also, the uh, glass actually uh, is beveled edged around there, uh, which gives it a little bit nice, uh, refined look to the uh, device. HTC Thunderbolt, uh, which has been around for about six months now, is uh, one of the uh, heaviest uh, phones here out of the uh, group. Comes in about a 6.23 ounces, also uh, relatively thick at a 0.5 inch inches thick uh, but it does give a pretty uh, solid feel to the phone has a two-tone gray on the back as well as the uh, soft touch also has the uh, kickstand on the uh, device as well has the uh, touch controls down here at the uh, bottom but overall a uh, pretty uh, pretty nice solid feeling uh, device the HTC Thunderbolt lastly the uh, LG Revolution is one of the most uh, uh, non-stylish phones here out of the lineup. It's uh, the tallest in the uh, group and also it's all uh, pretty much one color. There's black uh, besides it has a little uh, chrome around the uh, back so uh, very little style to the device and also the uh, largest out of the out of the group. Even though all four of these smartphones come with a 4.3 inch display the uh, quality uh, does vary between them. The uh, Motorola Droid Bionic uses a uh, pin tile matrix display, which means there are also uh, white subpixels with the uh, standard red, green, blue ones. The uh, Samsung Droid Charge uses the uh, Super AMOLED Plus display, and the HTC Thunderbolt and LG Revolution just use a, a standard uh, TFT display with just regular uh, red, green, blue pixels on it. Between the uh, four devices, the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic is actually the uh, brightest display out of the group. Uh, because of this, uh, when using the phone outside in a bright light, the uh, display is the uh, easiest to view out of the uh, out of the four smartphones here. Up next, the uh, Samsung Droid Charge. The display on it, uh, colors are going to be a uh, uh, very saturated, a little bit oversaturated in our opinion, uh, but also is still um, uh, pretty bright in outside circumstances though, uh, not quite as bright as uh, what you're going to see on the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic. Meanwhile, the HTC Thunderbolt and the LG Revolution, displays on those aren't uh, very bright. As you can tell, the uh, LG Revolution looks almost uh, dark uh, when compared next to the other ones as does the HTC Thunderbolt so uh, viewing indoors is okay but when outside in sunlight both of these displays are going to be pretty hard to make out. When in a dark environment like this uh, right now we have the uh, brightness 
on all four of the phones uh, turned up all the way just to show how bright they can be. As you can see here, the uh, Droid Bionic is the uh, brightest, though you wouldn't normally run it this bright in a uh, dark environment. This is just to show you um, that it is the uh, brightest out of the uh, group. Over here, the Samsung Droid Charge, you can see, does have the uh, most uh, saturated uh, colors out of them with the uh, HTC, HTC Thunderbolt and LG Revolution looking uh, pretty much all right in a dark environment. Another example is shown here with the uh, four phones. Have the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic here on the uh, top left. Colors are pretty accurate. Uh, whites down here at the bottom also very bright. The HTC Thunderbolt below it here on the uh, bottom left looks uh, relatively okay as long as the uh, uh, environment is uh, dark like this. Same thing goes with the LG Revolution and the uh, Samsung uh, Droid Bionic here on the uh, top right does have the uh, uh, highest saturated colors out of the uh, group. Uh, the one thing that we have noticed is uh, whites with it will have a, a tendency to look a bit bluish. We're over here on the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic. Uh, whites are a little bit more uh, pure in color. All four of these smartphones are using the uh, Android operating system. Uh, the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic is actually using the uh, uh, most current, which is the uh, Android Gingerbread, uh, which is the uh, 2.3 version, while the other three are still using uh, Android 2.2 uh, Froyo. So it's expected for the HTC Thunderbolt to eventually get uh, Gingerbread uh, by the end of uh, September. So hopefully that's uh, not too far along right now. Uh, the interfaces uh, between them uh, do vary a bit slightly. Uh, the one that we do like the best is the HTC Thunderbolt since it's using the HTC Sense UI on here. Have a total of uh, seven home screens. A uh, really nice selection of uh, widgets. As you can see, uh, moving between the screens uh, works really well. Have the uh, scrollable app drawer down here on the bottom. Also have a uh, selection of uh, different scene modes you can choose from, as well as uh, different skins. So overall, it does uh, provide the most uh, customization here out of the uh, out of the smartphones, as the uh, uh, Sense UI is the easiest to use and most customizable. Up next here on the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic. It's using the uh, most uh, current version of uh, Moto Blur. For some reason though, you're only gonna get five home screens with this, which is uh, really the only thing that uh, we don't like about it. Um, also, there's really no uh, customizations as far as uh, skins or themes. Uh, it does come with a, a pretty uh, decent selection of uh, widgets on here. Um, so it does uh, give some customization as far as the uh, widgets are concerned, but it's uh, still in all uh, limited to only five home screens and uh, can't really uh, do any uh, themes or skins to it. Up next over here is the uh, Samsung uh, Droid Charge with the uh, TouchWiz version 3.0. Seven home screens with it. Uh, moves uh, relatively uh, smooth, also a uh, nice selection of uh, widgets on here. Uh, lastly is the uh, LG uh, Revolution uh, with seven home screens. Um, not as many widgets on it, also doesn't feel uh, quite as polished. Um, sometimes there is a little bit of a delay when uh, moving between the uh, home screen. So all in all, all four of them are uh, pretty much going to give you the uh, uh, same experience considering they're all Android, but the uh, user interface is different on each one with the uh, HTC uh, Sense UI definitely standing out in front of the rest. All four of the smartphones are using Verizon's 4G LT network, so you're going to get a pretty decent uh, download and upload speeds as long as you're in a, a 4G area. Motorola Droid Bionic, uh, we just ran the uh, speedtest.net app on it. Um, I actually got the uh, fastest results, almost uh, 10 megabits per second download um, with uh, 4.8 megabits per second upload. Uh, we've seen this hit as high as uh, 12 megabits uh, download, but normally average anywhere between 9 and 10, so uh, not too bad there. The uh, HTC uh, Thunderbolt at a nine and a half megabits uh, download, but the uploads uh, seem uh, the slowest out of the group at only about a uh, three megabits. 
the uh, LG Revolution over here we have at uh, 8.53 megabits download so download speed on this one uh, tends to be the slowest but one thing that's interesting is the upload speed is usually faster than the download here at 9.37 megabits so we tend to think there might be uh, some caching going in uh, with the uh, speed test net app as this is the only one that's getting nine megabits on the uh, on the upload so we suspect that's uh, not 100 percent accurate and then over here the uh, samsung droid charge getting uh, 8.9 megabits on the download and uh, 4.35 megabits on the upload so all of them are uh, doing uh, pretty well um, about a one to two megabit difference uh, between the highest and lowest on the uh, download speeds, but still all operating a uh, pretty pretty good and uh, much faster than the uh, 3G EVDO, which uh, pretty much maxes out at about a 1.2 to 1.5 megabits per second. Right now, what we're going to do is load up the uh, Phone Arena website on all four of the devices. Uh, just to try to get a bit of a balance here to see uh, which ones are uh, loading the uh, fastest here. So we're going to try to get all of these to uh, go as quickly as uh, possible here. We've got the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic here on the uh, left side. And let's see which one comes in first place this time. Okay, Droid Bionic just finished, followed by the uh, HTC Thunderbolt, and then the LG Revolution and uh, Samsung Droid Charge was uh, pretty uh, pretty close there. All four are pretty much going to have the uh, same features as far as when it comes to the uh, browsing experience. All of them are going to have a uh, pinch to zoom on here as well as a uh, flash support so not really any uh, major differences as far as the um, the uh, web features are uh, are concerned uh, but in our testing over the last a few days we have noticed that the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic and HTC Thunderbolt do seem uh, to download web pages a little bit faster than the uh, Samsung Droid Charge and the LG Revolution but only by about maybe uh, five to eight seconds so not a huge difference there. For uh, taking pictures um, all of the smartphones are going to come with a 8 megapixel camera except here for the LG Revolution which uses a uh, 5 megapixel camera. Uh, for outside pictures we actually noticed that the uh, HTC Thunderbolt and uh, Samsung Droid Charge uh, do the best with the uh, most accurate colors followed by the uh, uh, Motorola Droid Bionic and uh, LG Revolution. Colors on the uh, HCC Thunderbolt and uh, Samsung Droid Charge seem to be the most uh, realistic. Uh, the uh, HTC Thunderbolt also does uh, really well with uh, image sharpness. Over here on the left side where we have the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic um, images on it uh, seem a little bit uh, uh, washed out looking at times with uh, color not looking uh, quite as good. But when taking pictures indoors, both the Motorola Droid Bionic and the HTC Thunderbolt actually uh, do the uh, best on here. As you can see, this is uh, with uh, bright light. And then this is uh, when moving to medium light. Then to low light. As you can see, the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic actually has the uh, brightest image here with low light. And then finally, in uh, complete darkness with a uh, flash, once again, the Motorola Droid Bionic does produce the uh, uh, best looking image. Uh, HTC Thunderbolt is okay, though over here on the LG Revolution and the uh, Samsung Droid Charge, both of those uh, pictures with flash aren't really all that great. But for recording videos, the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic is the only one in the group to actually record at a, a 1920 by a 1080p video resolution, also with a 30 frames per second. So uh, video quality is going to be the best on this one. Meanwhile, the other three devices are limited to uh, 720p video recording on there. 
Um, unfortunately, the uh, Samsung Droid Charge up here on the uh, top right um, was the uh, worst video out of the group as uh, uh, quality was the lowest detail and images also had a tendency to uh, be a bit uh, shaky uh, when recorded. Um, meanwhile, the other uh, to the HTC Thunderbolt and the uh, LG Revolution do uh, pretty decent with their uh, 720p video, though the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic with the uh, 1080p is definitely the best out of the bunch. Right now we've uh, ran the uh, Quadrant benchmark test on all four smartphones. The uh, fastest out of the bunch here, we got the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic with a score uh, a little over uh, 2,500 followed by the uh, LG Revolution with a score of uh, 2100. Up next is the HTC Thunderbolt with a score of uh, 1760 and on Quadrant the uh, lowest score goes to the uh, Samsung uh, Droid Charge which uh, averages uh, right around a thousand on there. Another uh, benchmark that we've uh, run on all of them is the uh, and Tutu benchmark program. Uh, once again, the uh, highest score goes to the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic, which had a score of 5,017. Up next on this one is the uh, Samsung Droid Charge with a score of 3,000, followed closely by the HTC Thunderbolt with a 2,700 and the LG Revolution with a 2800. So as you can see, these three over here are uh, anywhere between uh, 27, 28, and 3000, while the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic is uh, a little over 5000. Um, this definitely has to do with the uh, dual core uh, 1 gigahertz processor and the uh, faster uh, 1 gigabytes of uh, RAM on the device. Regardless of all the other features a smartphone may have, um, one of the most important is the uh, call quality signal reception and the uh, battery life. The uh, Motorola Droid Bionic uh, does great in all of these categories. Uh, call quality was actually the best out of the group with uh, voices on both ends sounding uh, clear and natural. Um, no background noise, uh, no static whatsoever. Uh, signal reception uh, was also pretty good. Uh, no drop calls and uh, 4G uh, stayed on uh, pretty much all the time. Um, also uh, battery life is going to be the best out of the group. We were able to get on a, a full battery charge about 10 and a half hours of uh, battery use or on a mixed uh, usage it would come in anywhere between uh, 16 to uh, 18 hours of a uh, mixed usage on the Motorola Droid Bionic so uh, does uh, does really well on here. The uh, Samsung uh, Droid Charge also does uh, really well with its uh, um, call quality as uh, well. There's no uh, background noise or uh, hissing or anything uh, like that. Um, uh, battery life is also alright. Uh, lasts about uh, 10 hours on a uh, continuous talk time or about uh, 12 hours under uh, mixed usage. The HTC Thunderbolt uh, call quality on it isn't that great. Uh, mostly uh, calls sound a little bit thin and there's a continual background hiss uh, while in all calls um, but a battery does uh, okay with about uh, six and a half hours of a uh, continuous talk time on it. Fortunately the LG Revolution doesn't do that great. Um, voices do sound a bit thin and uh, muffled at time uh, though it doesn't have the uh, hiss in the background like on the HTC Thunderbolt. Also uh, battery life is actually the worst on the uh, Revolution only coming in about five hours of continuous talk time which is about half that of the Motorola Droid Bionic and the Samsung Droid Charge. So after using all four of these smartphones over the past few days, um, they're all going to have their faults, uh, though we do believe the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic is the uh, best out of the group, um, has the uh, highest uh, quality construction, also the thinnest, 
Um, there's also the uh, HDMI port here on the uh, side as well. Um, the uh, 4.3 inch display, the uh, pin tile matrix on it um, can cause a little bit of a uh, screen door effect uh, depending on um, what content you're viewing. Um, but the upside from that is it does provide the uh, brightest display out of the group. Um, phone is also the uh, fastest uh, when it comes to moving between the home screens, running different apps, and has also got the uh, highest scores on the uh, benchmark program. So overall, we do like the uh, Droid Bionic the best. Um, the one area that we had issue with was the uh, uh, camera quality for taking pictures outdoors um, wasn't that great. Uh, indoor picture quality and flash uh, was actually pretty good, as is the uh, 1080p video. The uh, call quality is excellent on it as well, as is the uh, battery life. So between the four, uh, we feel that the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic um, is pretty much uh, the best out of the group. Up next, the uh, HTC Thunderbolt, uh, which has actually been out around for about uh, six months now. Uh, we like that it has the HTC Sense UI, uh, which does make it uh, pretty easy to use and also uh, very uh, customizable. Uh, call quality, though, isn't quite as good, uh, mostly because of the uh, background hiss in the back. Um, but if you're using a Bluetooth or a headset, you're not going to get that. Um, you're only going to get the hiss through the earpiece on there. Um, also though, uh, when using outside in direct sunlight, um, the screen's going to be a little bit darker and harder to see, but the uh, pictures from outside are, are uh, pretty good. Also, the uh, battery life um, isn't, as, uh, isn't as bad, uh, getting anywhere between uh, 8 to 10 hours on it. So, uh, Thunderbolt, uh, not as good overall as the uh, Motorola Droid Bionic, but comes in a uh, close second. Up next is the uh, Samsung Droid Charge. Uh, the main thing we don't care about it, like we said at the beginning, is the uh, slippery plastic construction that feels a bit cheap. Um, another issue that we've had with it is that it uh, likes to drop from uh, 4G to 3G quite often. Um, and honestly, all of these phones uh, over the last few days we've noticed have gone to 3G every once in a while, but only seems to last maybe about a minute or two, then pops back to 4G. For some reason here on the uh, Samsung Droid Charge, once it goes to uh, 3G, you're going to have to go into the airplane mode and uh, turn that on and off uh, to get it to go back to 4G, so it is a bit of an annoyance on here. Um, but the uh, Super AMOLED Plus display does a, uh, really well as far as having a highly saturated colors and the uh, camera also does a, a pretty decent job on it. Coming in uh, last, uh, kind of rounded out, is the LG Revolution. The uh, overall design is very bland, uh, nothing real interesting here uh, to get us that excited about the uh, design. It's also the uh, tallest out of the, uh, out of the group, so um, kind of stands out as uh, far as being the, uh, um, the, uh, the dullest looking uh, device. Uh, benchmarking um, was about average on it, uh, though the uh, pictures that we took outside uh, weren't that great. They're actually the uh, lowest quality out of the uh, group. So overall, that's pretty much it here. Uh, be sure to uh, check out our website at phonearena.com where you can read individual reviews on all four of the smartphones as well as our direct four-way comparison.